Good morning, Calvary Academy. Happy Friday. Just want to have a few minutes to speak to you this morning, just to wish you and greet you and say how much I miss you. Um, this morning, I just wanted to begin. I thought I wanted to talk to you a little bit about fear. And I wanted to remind you what God's word has to say about fear. Um, in Isaiah 41.10, God's word says, Do not fear, for I am with you. It tells us, Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. So if you have asked Jesus to come into your heart and he is truly your God, you have nothing to be afraid of. So I just wanted to ask you this morning, what are some things that scare you? When you were a little child or when we ask children this question, oftentimes they'll mention things like they're afraid of the dark or maybe they're afraid of spiders or monsters or getting lost. Um, they might even be afraid of getting dirty. But teens and adults are a little bit more experienced at this game of what scares us. And we tend to mention bigger risks, things like fear of getting into a car accident or experiencing a natural disaster um, or anything that could possibly rob us of our joy in our life, either our own or that of a loved one. But you know what, guys? I want to tell you, our creator God, he knows. He knows what we're made of, and he knows that fear can cripple us. In fact, in the Bible, the words, do not fear, are actually in the Bible 365 times. In one paraphrasing or another, it says repeatedly, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. The prophet Isaiah spoke God's word to God's chosen people, encouraging them to trust God, even though they were going to be suffering in captivity. They had learned, you know, oftentimes we are told not to fear because God has an amazing rescue plan. And it's easier for us to believe that about someone else. So when someone else loses a job, we very easily can say, please don't fear. God's got that in control. But somehow when it happens to us personally, then we have to put our faith into action. So when we lose our job or we learn that we have a serious illness or we're facing a big financial loss or we're watching a family member make dangerous choices that could really impact and hurt their life, we naturally experience fear for the future. What is going to happen to us? What is going to happen to them, we may ask? How will we get through this? I think right now a lot of students might be asking those kind of questions, but a lot of parents are asking those same kind of things. They're, they have a lot of fears. They have fear about the future, and they're worried about how are they going to get through this. But I want to tell you, fear can cause you to do crazy things. It can cause you to do irrational things, things that you would normally never do. Fear is paralyzing. Fear keeps you stuck. It causes you to trust in your own abilities. Fear will make you miss out on the plan that God has for you. Fear is the opposite of faith. God tells us he did not give us a spirit of fear in 2 Timothy 2.7. And he will help us when we're afraid in Isaiah 41.13. And that he will stay beside us always in Deuteronomy 31 and 6. What amazing promises. When overwhelming fears and overwhelming doubts can cause you to be afraid and feel stuck, you have two options. You can feed your fear and become more and more fearful, or you can feed your faith. So how do you feed your faith? You feed your faith with action. You need to actively change your focus from fear to faith. Faith and fear are both built by repetition. So it's up to you what you decide to feed. What are you going to repeat daily? And what will you starve? Let me share with you just a couple of tips that I read that are going to help you to feed your faith and to starve your fear. You need to first recognize the voices for what they are. The voice of fear are big, fat lies. The lies that need to be confronted with truth, not just ignored. You can't just ignore lies because they will just continue to grow and grow and they will leave you paralyzed. So we need to look at what the Bible says about fear and learn the truth. The more truth that you stuff into your brain about who you are and whose you are and who you were designed to be will better equip you to defeat those lies. I also want to encourage you to get out of your own head. So many times we think things about ourselves. We think things about, um, you know, 
what's going on in the world. And when defeating thoughts get overwhelming, you can easily get stuck in your own head and create all kinds of unnecessary drama. You can start to hyper-focus on all of the what-ifs of life. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if we can't do this? What if we can do this? You need to channel your energy elsewhere. Physical activity and exercise is a great way to do that too. When your energy is channeled in activities like exercise, you don't have time to listen to the lies that are in your head. Take a run around your block. Go for a walk. Play in your backyard, move your body, do anything you can to get rid of the excess energy. And then you got to take action. Did you know that procrastination is caused by fear? Just think about that for a minute. What have you procrastinated doing? Even during this time of COVID when we have lots and lots of time at home, what have you procrastinated doing? There is nothing like procrastination to keep you stuck and feeling worthless. If there's something that you need to do, do it quickly. Don't let fear take over. Don't let fear stop you from taking action and putting your faith into action. You know that faith is the opposite direction of fear. You cannot imagine what blessings are behind that door that fear is causing you to shut or not walk through. So I want to encourage you to run through that door. Find out what is on the other side. Reach out for help. You know, guys, we weren't meant to do life alone. And I've encouraged you previously about this. It's crazy to think that you can go through life without the help of others. The kind of thinking will lead you to have a nervous breakdown, to have failing health, a burnout, all kinds of frustrations. We need each other. God created us to be in communion and relationship with one another. So surround yourself with people who build you up, who believe in you, and cut out the ones who cause you to doubt yourself or to doubt and be afraid or even to doubt God. Find the things and the people that feed your faith and then immerse yourself in them. You know, guys, dealing with fear can be overwhelming and it can cause you to do crazy things. The truth is you have two choices. You can feed your fear or you can starve it. I just hope that you know I believe in you. I know that you can do this. Your teachers believe in you. And I hope you find some encouragement today in this word. And maybe even this devotion gave you a little extra courage to face your fears today and to face those lies with truth. Just want to remind you, God's word in Isaiah invites us to look at this big picture, the overarching story. Our God promises, in effect, he says this is a great promise. I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. My right hand will take hold of your right hand. So do not be dismayed. That is an amazing promise that God has given us that he is right with us. So we do not have to fear. So let's just um, pray at this time, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning and just acknowledging, Lord, that even though you are the great I am and you know the beginning from the end, Lord, we are human and there are times in our life where we are walking in fear instead of walking by faith. So right now, we just take time to repent of that and to ask you, Heavenly Father, to just to permeate our being and to change our mind, to transform our hearts and to help us to live according to your promises. And Heavenly Father, I do pray right now that you would calm our fears, that you would increase our trust, that you would help each and every one to loosen our worried grip on our lives, God, and that we would let you take our hands and that we would let you lead us in the path that you have for us. God, I know even during these uncertain times, you are still the God that is in control and we will not fear. So I just pray even today, God, give each student a special added measure of your faith. God, I pray that they would rise up, that they would feel confident, they would take a stand and feel bold, and that they would be assured that you are the God of their lives. Go before us today and help us to honor you and to please you and to walk by faith and not by fear. In Jesus' name. Okay, everyone, I love you. I hope this encouraged your heart today. Walk by faith. Don't walk by fear. Make sure you stay encouraged and stay in the word and have a wonderful day. Go Warriors!